QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Enter Time Form. Let's do it within two. It's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks. Going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area. Going to the view drop down, noting that we have the hide icon bar and open windows checked off. Open windows on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial. Opening up the PL Profit and Loss tab. 0101. 01242412 3124 January through December customize that report so we can font number change font to 12 okay yes please okay one more time on the reports with the setup process going down to the company and financial this time to the other big financial report balance sheet 123124 and then we'll customize it with the fonts, numbers change to 12, okay? Yes, please, okay. There's the setup process we do every time, going back to the home page in the toggle area in the open windows. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at the employee cycle or payroll cycle, looking at the major forms being the pay employees, pay liabilities, process payroll forms. We're now taking a step back to the entering of the time. Now note, as you see the enter time here, you might think this is kind of like the required first step, but it's not really the required first step because you can go directly to the pay employees and many companies may go directly to the pay employees for multiple reasons. Remember that this pay employees item is gonna be used whenever we go through the payroll process, actually processing in essence the checks or the payments that are going to be made, which would happen cyclically depending on how we set up the payroll, either weekly, semi-weekly, bi-weekly, or, or uh, monthly or something like that. I think semi-monthly, something like that. And we would process the payroll. Normally when we pay people, we have to set up the employees as either hourly employees, meaning we have to count their hours to determine how much to pay them, or salaried employees where we don't really have to count their hour because it's on a salary fixed kind of basis. The hour, or we might have employees, we might have some employees that fit both those categories, some that are hourly, some that are salary. So the hourly employees, then of course, we have to collect their hours in some way, shape or form to put it into the system to calculate the payroll. One way we could do that is we could use the enter time item here, but that's not the only way we can do that. I mean, we could have people entering their time into another payroll system and then or another time tracking system of some kind and then just counting those hours and putting them into the system on a periodic basis whenever we pay them we might have them just tell us what their time is we might have them fill it out on excel or something like that and just give us their time sheet in that format so so there's multiple ways we can gather that time one way we can gather that time is with the enter time system so if we enter the time into here one benefit of that is the time can then feed in to when we process the payroll so we don't have to log in the number of hours that were put in place. Now note that when we look at the enter time here, we often think of it as the starting point of the payroll process as if that's the only kind of use or the most significant use of it. And notice it's, it may not be the case because many times the people that really like this entering of the time are people using a job cost system which could include something like the, the construction company, but it also includes things like a law firm, a bookkeeping firm, a CPA firm, which are often structured in a partnership format. And then you have a staff and the staff is gonna have a lot of pressure on the staff to make sure that they are tracking the time they're putting in, billing it to the proper customer, saying what they're working on and whatnot. 
so that then this time tracking could be connected to the create invoice. And then when you generate the invoice, then we can bill out the time to the customer based on the time that has been entered into the system. So oftentimes the people that really like this, the industries that like the time tracking thing are not just people that are trying to process payroll, although some might like the time tracking simply for that, but also people trying to bill out for the time using some kind of job cost system, which includes bookkeepers, law firms, and so on. Also note the next problem then is gonna be, how am I gonna make it as easy as possible to enter the time into the system here? Because what you would like to have is the employee tracking the time, entering the time, and if they're processing it to a job, telling us who they worked on so that we can get that information periodically in our billing cycle and bill for it as well as enter the time into the payroll to pay the employee. Also just note, when you think about the amount that we're gonna bill for on the invoice, that doesn't need to match the amount that we pay them in payroll. So the billing hours aren't necessarily the same hours that we charge here, where we might want a markup, of course, of the hours that, they, that we bill out to the clients. But in, in any case, then how do we get this into the system? Because we might be limited in the number of people that can access QuickBooks directly, and we might not want to give too much access to the QuickBooks system and so on to people entering the time, just staff employees. So that you could look into other options here on the turn on time tracking to get to look into options to have the, the process of entering the time as streamlined as possible. So we're just gonna go through the data input just so you can see a screen if we data input it here. So I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna focus primarily on using it for payroll, but we'll talk a little bit about the billing of it as well. I'm gonna say use weekly time. So I'm gonna enter the weekly time. And if we just pick one of these items, I'm gonna pick an employee, Dean. So Dean here, we've got an employee and we set the time here and we've got the week's time sheet that they can basically fill out. Now down below when they enter the time, if they're in a job cost system, if they're, they're in a construction company now, or if they work at a law firm or a CPA firm, there would be a lot of pressure not to just have empty time with no customers. We would try to be getting them, they would have a lot of pressure to put the customer that they're working on and then apply the appropriate service item, which will help us to bill out this time to the invoice. So this information is not generally there for us to pay them to process the payroll. It's there for us to bill out onto the invoice as is this item. The number of hours they have can be used to bill out the time on the invoice and for us to pay them. Notice that we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday here. Uh, we, so because this is one line item uh, right here, if they worked on a different, if they worked on like the same job every day, then they could have put the eight hours here and eight hours here and eight hours here. But if they worked on a different job, then they have to go to the next line here for that separate job and then put that on Tuesday. That's why Tuesday is staggered. So you can see Tuesday here, they worked on this job framing and they worked on that for two days. That means they didn't need a separate line item for Wednesday because they worked on the same job for Tuesday and Wednesday. And then having it checked off over here means that it's billable. That means that it's gonna be pulled over into the invoice. So we'll be able to open an invoice for the, the customers that are being charged here and it'll allow us then to pull over based on the items into the invoice so we can bill or invoice the client based on the work that the employee did. And these hours would then pull over, I'm gonna close this out, pull over into the pay employees. So if I went into the pay employees here, it would take us into this tab. And if I go into the uh, pay, notice you got your time tracker up here too. But if I go into the employees that we've seen in prior presentations, continuing on, cause it's a practice thing. We had Dean here. I'm gonna go into Dean. Notice that the hours uh, should be something if they were an hourly employee that could basically populate automatically, right? And so the Dean happens to be a salaried employee. So note that even though Dean is a salaried employee and we don't need to track Dean's time for payroll, we still tracked the time not to be used for payroll, but because we're gonna bill it out to the customer. And that's very common in like a CPA firm or something like that. You might be paying someone's salary, 
but they still need to track their time, not because we need to count it to, to pay them, but because they need to tell us who to bill, who to invoice the customers for. I'm gonna close this out. Let's check another one just to see if, so this one's hourly, right? So we've got hourly and that $80 here may have pulled in automatically from the information that was input into the time tracking, which here would pull over because this is an hourly uh, employee. So that would be the general idea. I'm gonna close this out, closing this out. If we go back to the home page, then we go through the payroll process. Just to recap, you could enter the time uh, here, but it's not kind of required because you might have the time in other ways, or they might be salaried employees. This tool being used for both invoicing oftentimes and to enter the number of hours for the payroll. When we process the payroll, that's basically issuing a check, lowering the checking account, uh, for the amount that's going to be paid the other side going to an expense but it took out all the withholdings as well creating liabilities which we then have to pay out with the liability which in essence is just another kind of check decreasing the payroll liabilities to pay off those liabilities and decreasing the checking account and then that's the end of the normal cycle these three this one being optional depending on if we're using it and then we have the information reporting cycle to the fed and possibly to the state on a quarterly basis usually and then a yearly basis for some forms 941s quarterly 940 w2 w3 yearly